Hey everybody, welcome back to the Husker Big Red YouTube channel. I'm Chris Peterson and joining me as always is Danny Gillette. And uh, we're back here for um, a special episode of our podcast after a huge day for Nebraska football. Um, they finally got the news. Five-star quarterback Dylan Rayola announced his commitment on Monday. Um, he released it with a poem, actually. Um, a commitment video actually came later. But Danny, um, massive news for the Huskers. But what did you think about, uh, or what? Are, what's, what's your first reaction to uh you know, Dylan Rayola to Nebraska. That, that uh, commitment video gave me chills. I got to say, that was a very well done commitment video. I loved it. And uh, this is a massive commitment for Nebraska football. I've said it before, and, you know, I said it before, Rayola. I'll say it again right here. This 2024 class could completely change the trajectory of the program. And adding Rayola certainly does that. I mean, you, you look at, you know, I just watched some of his highlights again and, you know, some of his tape and, you know, he has all the intangibles that you want for a quarterback. He can make the deep throws. He has tremendous accuracy. He leads receivers to the football. I mean, just the way he goes about playing the game and the decisions he makes with the ball. I mean, he only had one interception last season um, in comparison to 36 touchdowns. So he's a very smart, very technically sound quarterback, which is important given our state of recent quarterback play. But, um, you know, this is absolutely massive for Nebraska. Um, you know, this is a signature recruit for Matt Rule and the coaching staff. And, um, you know, what it looked like they were out on Rayola last spring and, you know, last winter. I mean, I guess they never gave up. And not only, honestly, and, you know, not to go too far down a rabbit hole, were they able to land Rayola, they ha also have Daniel Kalen. So that's two Elite 11 quarterbacks in the room. I mean, I don't know how anybody can complain about that, although Husker fans like to complain about a lot. So they probably will find something, but I'm happy. I'm happy right here. Uh, yeah, I'm very – when uh, I got the news, I threw my arms up into the air. I dropped my phone. I was just uh, – you know, it was just a great – moment and to me you know i i've said i think i said this before and i wrote this on huskerbigred.com but i think this is the biggest commitment since touchdown tommy frazier i mean i really can't think of another one that you know has the impact and i'm not saying that you know this is going to lead to back-to-back -back national championships or anything like tommy did i mean it's obviously a very different era but it really does feel the same in the sense that you know like Tom Osborne knew that he needed to, you know, get some, you know, get some players from Florida and get some speed if he was going to beat Miami and Florida State, the two teams that had really denied him a national championship. And that's what, you know, Tommy Frazier was. And I think Matt Rule, I mean, if you looked at this Nebraska team, it was a quarterback away from being really good this year. And, uh, you know, so I, I think that he knew that he needed to go get a guy. Nebraska had the ties to Dylan Rayola. And I think that, you know, his, uh, I mean, he said it all in his tweet, you know, that he wanted to come home again. I think that that, that pull and that tie to Nebraska, you know, was always in the back of his mind. And, um, you know, there was Ari Wasserman of The Athletic kind of put it really, really well in that, you know, he could have made the decision that, you know, just about every five-star quarterback makes, you know, and go to Ohio State or Georgia or Alabama. But he took the less traveled route and he went to Nebraska. And I think it's not just going to be a good thing for Nebraska, but I think that could be a great thing for all of college football. I mean, what if more kids – start doing that and taking chances and, and uh, you know, being the guy that builds a program up instead of, you know, just being another cog in the machine, as Dylan Rayola wrote in his uh, in his eloquent poem announcing his commitment yesterday. It's always good when teams like Nebraska, Texas, Miami, you know, Penn State even, you know, those type of programs are, you know, having good seasons. It's good for college football. And, you know, it's good for Nebraska on a national scale. I had a ton of friends texting me about it that weren't even from Nebraska. They were like, wow, Dylan Rayola? I'm like, heck yeah, Dylan Rayola. So it, it's just generating a buzz around the program nationally that I think could have positive long-term implications. Definitely. I mean, in there, you know, I think another thing is people, you know, just the common sentiment, you know, is he worth – um, you know, all of this uh, buzz and all the, you know, excitement and the hoopla. Yes. Yes, he absolutely is worth all of this because he truly is, you know, I mean, generational, a generational prospect. I mean, that's not my, those aren't my words. Those are words of other, you know, impartial scouts. And I mean, it's, I think he just has a very unique mindset. And I think a lot of unique things that go into making Dylan Rayola a great player. I mean, he had one interception this season. I think he threw like 30 some odd touchdowns. Um, six through 
Yeah, 36. He's 6'3", uh, 230 pounds. He's got an incredible arm. But the thing that I have been most excited about, you know, people talking about the mental side of the game for him. You know, he, he uh, his brother um, says that he has a photographic memory and he's like, yeah, I kind of do. I remember every, you know, the coverages that I see. And the other thing, too, is you got to remember this guy. I mean, Dominic Rayola, 15 year veteran in the NFL, you know, has been teaching this guy. You know, about offensive line, he says one thing that makes him unique about the quarterbacks, or I guess, you know, he didn't say this about himself, but he knows the assignment of like every offensive lineman too. And I'm sure that that has to do with Dominic Rayola. So, I mean, I think in terms of like, you know, being a freshman quarterback, potentially playing and looking at, you know, doing things like protections and all that type of stuff and understanding coverages, like, I don't think it's going to be too much for him. I think that, uh, you know, his mental capability for, understanding the game and processing defenses, I think is going to be just as impressive as his physical arm talent, which I think is going to be as good as any quarterback in college football next season. Yeah. And you mentioned, you know, how, how mature he was and, you know, it seems like he's ready for the spotlight. And of course we'll see Mm -hmm. what, what happens on the field and if he can handle the pressure, but I truly believe he can. I mean, in a lot of ways, this, this, you know, quarterback is a lot more mature than 28 year old me I mean it's kind of impressive you know how he carries himself and I think that's really important moving forward because there's going to be a lot of pressure I mean when he's when he's under center for Nebraska there's going to be a lot of pressure as top quarterback in the niche and you know in the in the class and you know I think I think he's ready for it I really do think he's ready for it and hopefully he uh, brings some friends Pressure builds diamonds. That's what they say, right? And, uh, you know, in the right situation, pressure builds diamonds. And Dylan Rayola is embracing this pressure. Like, you know, look at his, look at the poem he wrote. I mean, he's talking about Johnny Rogers and Mike Rozier and Eric Crouch, and he's wearing number 15, like a homage to Tommy Frazier. Like, that's, you can't do anything more than embrace the pressure. Like, so that to me, like, just the fact that he's like, you know, I'm ready for that. And and the thing is, is like, this guy is a Nebraska fan. I mean, let's not get it twisted. Like he watched his dad, you know, I mean, not, he didn't watch him when he played, but I mean, he's seen his dad in the big red. Like he's been there with his dad so many times. Like, you know, I do think that that ultimately, you know, made a big difference. And I just think like the opportunity to be that and to write that legacy, like, yeah, if he went to Georgia and won, I mean, it's like, cool everybody does that you know i mean like it's not anything special but if you you come to nebraska and you turn this program around you're going to be a legend forever and i think that that really appealed to him i mean a bunch as well as a a number of other things too i think he really does like coach rule um i think that you know i mean he even included that little clip of of coach rule um you know talking to the team this year i mean that just shows you that even though nebraska maybe wasn't at the forefront of his recruitment like he was still keeping an eye on what this team was doing you know what i mean and so um and i think like if you are the rail um i should Rayola, i think i've been mispronouncing it Rayola, but if you uh if you're that i mean the offensive line played great and almost all those guys i mean i'm pretty sure the top five i mean not great but a lot better um a lot better and uh, all those guys are coming back. Plus, you're getting, you know, basically two top 150 recruits on the offensive line. And, you know, we're getting Carter Nelson, Isaiah McMorris. I mean, it's just I, it's hard not to smile. It's hard not to yeah. smile when you think about the kids that are already coming with Dylan Rayola, not to mention what could be coming in the future with him, you know, from the transfer portal, future classes. And and we might see some other fireworks on Wednesday, too. Yeah, honestly, I don't think it's going to be an action pack signing day, but I do you think that Wednesday could lead to some surprises? I really do. I mean, I think people want to play with Dylan Rayola. I mean, me personally, I have no inside mm-hmm. knowledge, but my personal, uh, my personal wish for somebody to bring along with Dylan Rayola would be Ryan Wingo. I love Ryan Wingo. Um, I, you know, I, th- I think he's a really good wide receiver. He's really fast, deep threat. And for what Rayola wants to do, you know, I think Wingo would be a good fit. And that's the thing. Dylan Rayola, in my opinion, fits very well with a guy like Malachi Coleman, who, you know, is fast, loves the deep ball, you know, can make big plays. Same thing with McMorris and Hall. They can make Mm -hmm. big plays as well down the field. It's, you know, people want to knock the receivers last year. And granted, they didn't put up big numbers, but half the problem was actually getting them the ball. Now that you have a quarterback like Rayola who can get them the ball, I think you're going to see, you know, a marked improvement in the coming seasons at the wide receiver position. And I think some of the questions surrounding, 
you know, depth will go away quickly. Yeah, I mean, I can think about uh, the game against Illinois, which they won, but uh, Malachi Coleman um, beat a guy. He had had a touchdown to find Rick Harbor getting yeah. underthrown by like five yards. I mean, so, <laughs> yeah, no. you know, uh, right. yeah, I, I think that, yeah, this receiver room is going to be, you know, really exciting. I, I, like I said, I would like to see him add, you know, a guy on the outside, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I, 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 even if they don't, I still think they're going to be okay because you've got, I really think Thomas Fedoni with a guy like, um, Dylan Raiola, he's really going to have a good season next year because he's really, I, I guarantee you, his health is just, you're not even going to think about it next year. You're not even going to think about this guy having an injury. Like, I wouldn't be even surprised if he stops playing with that break. Like, he's just going to be a different player next year. Your second year back from your injury, you're just different. Um, and then, I mean, Carter Nelson, I don't know what they're going to do with him, but just get that guy the ball. And uh, I, I think, you know, like Malachi Coleman, Lloyd, and uh, but another thing, you know, there, uh, Nebraska's not out of it with Julian Fleming, and Julian no. Fleming, I don't think, is uh, going to Syracuse. So it's basically down to Penn State and Nebraska. And uh, what with maybe this would be enough to get him to, to come here because you know he wants to be a number one receiver and uh, you know he could play with a five star quarterback. I know Penn State has one too, but they don't let him throw the ball down the field. So I, I think if I was him, I would think strongly about Nebraska because man, you had one more, you know, a guy like Julian Fleming. To Malachi Coleman, to Thomas Fedoni, to all these young receivers, like, holy cow, this could be a really exciting offense. And it will make the defenses work that much easier. You know, the defense, you know, play play their tails off the entire season. And let's be honest, for what? I mean, a lot of games, they were they were creating the highlights on the highlight reel. Now, you got a good defense with many returning players and some really good incoming freshmen. And you have an offense that's well balanced and you know has explosive playmakers on the outside. When I was yelling at Marcus Satterfield last year to stop throwing the ball deep like Heinrich Harburg was Patrick Mahomes, he now has the playmakers to run that offense. He didn't yeah. last year, but I could see what he wanted to do. And he just couldn't get it done with Harburg. He kept trying to his credit, Satterfield, but it just didn't work. And now I think we're getting playmakers, you know, and, you know, big time, you know, commitments that can run the offense that this team wants to run. And the missing piece to that last year was a quarterback. Now we have that. I honestly feel a little bit better about Marcus Satterfeld as the offense coordinator. Again, we'll have to see what happens and if, you know, some of the struggles, you know, continue from last year. but. Half of our problem last year with this type of offense that Satterfeld wants to run is that we didn't have a quarterback last year. Now we have two in Kalen and Rayola, and I think we're going to see a marked improvement. Yeah, I agree 100%. It'll be interesting to see if if Nebraska does, you know, hire a quarterback's coach at some point or, or something along those lines. But, Which would be um, good, I think, yeah. Um, and another thing I did want to say just uh, – on this, on the piece of the offense, you know, we talked about Dante, uh, you know, Dowdell yesterday, and um, he he would be a really great fit. I did uh, make a little bit of an error, and I said that he would have four years of eligibility left. I actually looked at his stats; he will only have three because for some Oregon like totally misused this guy. Like he he, he carried the ball eight times in the first game, and then they had they had five other games where they played him, and uh, he only carried the ball more than two times once. So like they burned his red shirt to give him the ball like one time. Like it makes Oregon no has sense. a history of misusing players. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Mario Cristobal did it with Justin Herbert, so that's that's no surprise. <laughs> so, but he did he did average uh, five yards in attempt last year, and he's like a two hundred and twenty pound back. So, I mean, he would be a fun guy to pair with uh, with Emmett Johnson, and you know, being a can top... he stay healthy? That's my question. Yeah, I mean, it'd be hopefully. I, I guess that would be um, you know a, a good reason to bring him in because I don't know if Gabe Irvin and uh, Ramir Johnson can. Although, no. Although I uh, yeah, I guess I, Ramir has had injury problems the last two years. Um, no. So I was going to say in the the previous year it wasn't because he didn't play; he just didn't play, but he also had some injury issues. So anyway, th <laughs> this team I think is going to be very um, you know set up going into next season. So what I wanted to tee up with that in mind, with that personnel in mind. Um, do you think that Dylan Rayola, when we take the field August 31st against UTEP, do you think he's the starting quarterback? At this point, yes. Yes, I do. I mean, I don't think he comes here if he's not 
you know, at least considered in the starting mix. And, you know, also at this point, there's a lot of transfer portal quarterbacks coming off the board. And I don't think Matt Rule wants to pay the price for Cam Ward, although I think he paid a big price for Rayola. But the difference between Ward and Rayola is you've heard Matt Rule say he wants to, you know, build through the high school ranks and recruiting and not necessarily always a transfer portal. So I don't think, you know, there's going to be any more quarterback moves. I think we're going to go with a smaller quarterback room. Um, But yes, I do think Rayola starts against UTEP in August. And boy, I wish it was August already. (laughs) Me too. Um, I wish it was spring ball already, but um, I agree. I, I agree. And I think we'll see this spring. Um, I'm interested to see what Chubba Purdy's going to do, um, you know, and see if he sticks around. I feel like he's going to enter the transfer portal, um, especially I think he just graduated too. Um, I could be wrong, though. And, and hopefully he'll stick around. I think it is ideal to have, you know, four scholarship quarterbacks if you can swing it. Um, that's getting pretty hard to do sometimes in college. Like you see a lot of programs that can't do that. Um, so Georgia. If, yeah. Yeah. Georgia and yeah. And like Ohio States, like, yeah, a lot of these teams need to add guys. So, but yeah, I would, I think that the schedule, I mean, it's UTEP, Colorado at home and Northern Iowa. So, I mean, it's not like a, it's not a gangbuster schedule. And so I think it would be, I just think it sets up really well for him to, you know, get in there and play right away. And, um, you know, he's probably, there's a very, very good chance he's only going to be here for three years because he's going to be a top five pick in the whatever 27 NFL draft or whatever that would be. I'm maybe it was maybe it's 26, but at any rate, so my thought is like if he's ready, don't hesitate, don't waste time. Don't I mean it's just to me, I don't I don't really understand see the point of like saying, okay, let's play, let's play Cheba Purdy for these first few games. You know what I mean? Like this isn't this isn't the NFL where you're where you're preparing your starter for like the next 10 years. You know what I mean? Like you've got three seasons and I feel like you should be able to beat, you know, I, I feel like they could beat UTEP in Northern Iowa with Heinrich Harburg at quarterback. So, I mean, if Dylan Rayola is out there, like I just, I really feel like they can win those games and he's going to, and that the more he gets that experience, the sooner he gets in that fire, the better he's going to be because really, I mean, as a quarterback, I mean, at some point, I mean, you, you can benefit from learning, but at some point you got to play. Like that's the, the best way to, to learn right. is to play. And so I would rather have him go through that his freshman season. Yeah. And then by the time he's a sophomore, like, bam, you got, you're ready to have like Kalen Williams, like, you know, Heisman contender type quarterback. Cause that's what I think he's going to be. I'm not trying to, you know, like I'm not trying to, to hype it up, but that's, that's what the scouting report says that this guy is. And you, you watched his, his, you know, film a little bit and he has all the, tools necessary to be that type of quarterback and then you're not going to have to freak out and this is what we've done in past years as a program and say who's going to start once adrian leaves who's going to you know start you know when jeff sims gets hurt and things like that you already have a guy in danny kalen who will be ready to take over the reins once rayola leaves and i think that's important as well because you know Kalen, like I said earlier, he's an elite 11 quarterback. I mean, that's no slouch of a quarterback. He's very good. And I think, you know, building the quarterback depth for the future with elite quarterbacks is going to be important. I mean, look at Georgia. I mean, yeah, you know, Brock Vanderf is gone. Rayola is gone. But they had all these quarterbacks in the room ready to go if need be. I don't think anybody, well, I shouldn't say anybody, but I think the fact that Carson Beck broke out this year was an unplanned welcome surprise for Georgia, and so players decommitted and things like that. But the good programs always have a couple quarterbacks ready to go, and it's good to see Nebraska finally, crossing my fingers, hopefully in that position to do that. Yeah, I think the depth part is important too, right? Because, you know, as long as they can keep Daniel Kalen here and, you know, I think they can get him some NIL money, which is really why I don't see them getting, I mean, if they get a transfer quarterback, it's not going to be, it's not going to be somebody, it's going to be like a veteran, like a guy that's played a little bit, but has like a year left, you know, it's not, it's not going to be a big name guy. And um, one, I think is the, is the money part of it, but two, I, I think they really, you know, I mean, I, I to me, if Kyle McCord was still coming here, I don't think Daniel Kalen would be because then you've got, you know, like, where's yeah. he going to even get the reps to get better? 
Like it's right. one thing to it's one thing to talk about the future, but you still need those practice reps. And if he's the number, like if you're the number two quarterback, like you're gonna get playing time in some games. And you know, I mean, there are injuries. Like it takes, you know, it takes two quarterbacks. So like, you know, if something ever happens, you want to have somebody behind him. And then, ideally, like I said, and I wrote this on HuskerBigRed.com, but if you can have three years of Dylan Rayola and two years of Daniel Kalen, like this, this could be you know, a golden era in Nebraska football. And I don't mean it like national championship, but we could have, we could have a really strong run that we haven't had here in a long, long time of being a top 25 team for like five, you know, four or five consecutive years. And then you started to set the precedent for recruits. Okay. They did really well with Dylan Rayola. All right. Daniel Kalen, you know, is having a really strong year. What can they do for me here now? And, you know, I think, that's important too, because quite honestly, we haven't had this level of, you know, quarterback recruit and quarterback play in quite some time. I mean, I know Adrian Martinez is highly rated out of high school, but I think Dylan Rayola is obviously a whole another level. So, if they can set the quarterback precedent over the next couple of years, I think that will bode well moving forward, and you know, maybe make the hits a little less when Rayola and Kalen leave the program to go to the draft. Um, but yeah, it's uh, you know, Matt Rule said it's a sleeping giant, man, and uh, he is awakening it right now. So, our last topic what do you think the recruiting impact is going to be? We talked about this a little bit, um, but I mean, going forward, just how much how much more attractive does this make Nebraska to other recruits, especially on the off? I mean, on either side of the ball, because kids want to get to the playoff and they know what kind of quarterback you need to get there, and Nebraska just got one of those quarterbacks. I think it helps, honestly, the offensive line a lot. I think, you know, we already talked about on Monday, they offered the Buford four-star offensive tackle. You know, I think, um, you know, this will help receivers because they want to play with, <laughs> I mean, Dylan Rayola is a top-notch quarterback and they'll want to play with him. And I know Nebraska has a lot of depth at wide receiver, but I mean, I think, you know, any playmakers that they can bring in would be awesome. And Quite honestly, I think we might see, like we talked about a little earlier, you know, something on Wednesday. But, I mean, this is this has massive implications for recruiting. Uh, it gives Nebraska, meaning Rayola, a sure thing at quarterback. Um, and it lets the wide receivers know that there really isn't going to be any sort of quarterback competition or... Um, uncertainty at the position, which is also something we haven't, you know, we haven't had stability at the quarterback position in quite some time. Um, you know, even Adrian Martinez, you know, with his injuries, you know, created some instability, but this lets the wide receivers know that, you know, Dylan Rayola is our guy and, you know, who wouldn't want to come play for him? I mean, and you look at, you know, how Rayola throws, not to go off on a tangent here, but he makes smart throws for the wide receivers. He doesn't leave the wide receivers, you know, hung out to dry with over the middle throws where they can get absolutely lit up. He makes smart throws as a quarterback, and I think that will go a long way as well in terms of receivers wanting to play uh, with him. Yeah, I think people, um, I think people are going to be surprised at you know just his poise. I don't, I don't think he's going to look like a freshman out there. I really don't. Um, so yeah, it's going to be. Exciting. I can't wait till spring ball gets here. I can't wait for signing day. And that's going to be, you know, a very exciting day. It looks like at least uh, we're going to be getting Vincent Shavers tomorrow um, for Miami. Also Larry Tarver. Um, so, you know, some, some exciting things. Maybe we'll get an offensive skill player or something crazy like that will happen, but uh, you never know. But for now guys, it's a great day to be a Nebraska football fan. So make sure that you guys uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, don't miss any of our content. Hit that like button. Also check out huskerbigred.com for uh, all your latest recruiting updates. And uh, we'll be back on Wednesday to recap signing day. So um, join us again. I think we'll put together a little live chat so we can all uh, revel in uh, one of the best recruiting classes Nebraska's had in a long time. And uh, as always, go Big Red. Go Big Red.